السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله My dear brothers one of the greatest favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us is our family our nuclear family and our extended family although our extended family is one of the greatest favors of Allah upon us yet sometimes we tend to make it one of the biggest misery for us or for them and today let's have a look at what Allah what we could what we ought to be keeping in our mind towards our relationships of the extended family which is one of the most precious gifts of Allah upon us the Prophet ﷺ, when he would start his khutbah as you know he would start with khutbah al haja and he would tend to recite on many occasions not always he would tend to recite three verses from the Quran before the speeches he did one of these three verses shows to us the extreme importance of our extended family and our blood relatives. Before we look at this verse, I want us to appreciate the importance of the topic that we are talking about, so that after that we can look at this verse and the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Quite often, brothers, it happens that there are problems that come up between us and those who are the closest to us, our extended families. And then, these problems we may sometimes turn a blind eye to them if we think it doesn't involve us however as we will see today it is our duty to try to make good relationships between our other relatives who may be not, not having a great relationship between one another it may be that sometimes maybe we are the ones hurting others or it may be one of them is hurting one of our close relatives and we tend to sometimes think oh it doesn't concern me it doesn't concern my wife it doesn't concern my kids so I will just forget about it and just pray for them praying for them is great but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we owe more to Allah than just, I mean, praying is great, but we owe, owe more than that, which is to do some actions as well. I will mention a classic example that I have come across a lot from different people of different nationality background, my dear brothers. And when I did this talk in front of some Muslim brothers and sisters, one of them mentioned how actually a number of them mention how in their own different countries these kind of things are not too uncommon and they happen so let's remind ourselves because this might be happening in our you know in our background country where we came from and it might be happening right here in australia amongst us muslims and as much as it can happen amongst non-muslims as well and we want to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us towards our family and our relatives. One of the most common examples I've heard, my dear brothers, is when a husband and wife are living together and they are doing their best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by looking after the parents in their old age. So the husband and wife are living together, looking after the parents when they are elderly. Some of the examples that I've come across quite a lot is obviously when one of the two parents passes away and then the other parent is remaining and they are old and bedridden due to their health problems. When, these pa when this parent is old and bedridden due to her health problems, for example, and she needs the son and the daughter-in-law or the daughter and the son-in-law to be looking after them. So when they are doing their best to look after the mother-in-law or the mother that is in the house, some of the other relatives, the brothers and sisters of the husband or the wife, they might feel that you need to do more than this. You are not doing enough. Why did you do this? You should have done this. Yet the brothers and sisters might be living elsewhere. In one example that I want to mention today, and I've seen this in more than one countries, this kind of an example, husband and wife living together, and then there is the mother-in-law, and the husband and wife are doing the best to look after her in old age, and yet 
the sisters-in-law are coming and nagging the wife why aren't you doing this with their mother why aren't you doing this with their mother you should do this you should do that to the extent that for this wife who is living there and looking after her mother-in-law in old age it becomes so difficult for her that she may almost become depressed she may be crying she may even be on the verge of maybe fainting from the amount of pressure that is put upon her who is this pressure put upon by her own sister-in-laws from the extended family we are meant to be a blessing to one another but sometimes we make life difficult for one another in this situation in one situation like this when that wife's brother i was speaking to him and i asked that brother what are you going to do to help your sister in this situation what are you going to do to help your situation your sister in this situation where she's suffering in this way overseas in another country and again i want to remind ourselves brothers this kind of zulm injustice oppression it happens all over the world it's not just between muslims it happens with non-muslims it happens with muslims it happens in the eastern countries it happens in the western countries this is a human phenomenon where we get tempted to transgress the rights of other people upon us and allah in islam helps us to be those who bring mercy and kindness rather than oppression and injustice so when i asked this brother what are you going to do to help your sister the brother shook his head and simply said i will pray to allah and i will take my wife and me and my children and we will move to another neighborhood so we can get away from all of these problems far away so i asked the brother don't you think that it is your responsibility to not only help your wife and children but also to help your sister as well and the brother was taken aback shocked surprised as though it was a strange question that he never thought about that what he owed to his sister about what she is facing in you know with her sister-in-laws the difficulty and then i asked the brother brother can you think of a verse in the quran that shows to you about your responsibility towards your sister-in-law and of course towards others as well towards your mother towards your wife towards your sister towards your daughters towards others can you think of a verse that mentions to you about this responsibility and you know brothers the brother could not think of this verse in the quran although i am sure he knew it and i'm sure most of us here know this verse but we don't realize the demands that this word verse has upon us towards our close relatives such as our sisters and mothers the verse that i'm talking about that most of us know my dear brothers is the verse from surah an-nisa where the verse is a long one but i want to only focus on what concerns us in our topic today which is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ar-rijalu qawwamuna 'ala an-nisa the rest of the verse is long bima faddala allah ba'dahum 'ala ba'd wa bima anfaqu min amwalihim and the rest of the verse but the part i want to focus on is the first part ar-rijalu qawwamuna 'ala an-nisa men are the qawwam over the women what is the word qawwam caretaker maintainer protector manager etc just to appreciate in arabic my dear brothers the word qawwam now i see people sitting in the friday prayer in front of me all men that means it concerns us my dear brothers it concerns every one of us this verse so let's try to appreciate this verse as best as we can what does the word qawwam mean in arabic its root meaning comes from the verb that we know qama qama means to stand up qama means to stand or stand up <coughs> and qawwam is a very frequent and highly exaggerated emphatic form a noun from this root verb meaning someone who is always standing up looking after someone else protecting them taking care of them managing their affairs and so on everything that is required to do with this in being a manager this is what allah said to the men that this is how they take care of their female relatives and notice allah said ar-rijalu qawwamuna 'ala an-nisa he used the general general word men are the qawwam towards the women 
That means it's the duty of every man to be helping and taking care of and being there, not only for his wife, but also for his mother, for his sister, for his daughter, and other, at least other blood relatives. And then after that, to a lesser degree, to others as well. So my dear brothers, it's our duty to be there for our sister, our mother, our daughter, and everybody else, and not just for our wives, who we often think about. So now in this situation, the brother, he forgot, didn't remember. And I'm not blaming him because so many others forgot as well. But let us remind ourselves of what we owe. And as I said, this is sister-in-laws making life difficult for a sister-in-law. Women hurting other women. And it could happen with women hurting men, men hurting women, men hurting men. And we could all be doing this. So let's remind ourselves in the remainder of my talk today, my dear brothers, about some of the verses in the Qur'an and hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned and the verses that Allah mentioned about how, how hurtful it is to even hurt the feelings of another person, let alone to hurt them and oppress them and do injustice to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith he says, The process said, You shall certainly enjoin good to each other. And how does that relate to us today? The brother thought there wasn't much he could do to help his sister. It wasn't so much his duty. He was going to turn a blind eye, take his family and go somewhere else. But my dear brothers, when we see our family members, extended family members, in difficult circumstances, somebody else hurting them, it's our duty to, in a nice way, try to make good between them. You don't go and do illegal things to help our relatives. No, Islam doesn't teach us to do illegal haram things and so on. No, but in a nice way, we try to help the person that is there by going and talking to them and encouraging them, or maybe bringing an elderly person from the community to talk to the person who's doing the oppression and try to stop them from that. Or to bring the law or others and so on to try to stop from them, them from that. <coughs> the Prophet says in this hadith that I just mentioned, he says, indeed you shall enjoin good and forbid wrong, or it will be near that Allah will send upon you his punishment and then you will pray to Allah and he will not answer your prayer. And there are different wording to this very important hadith as well. So this hadith shows to us brothers and sisters, if we see other people of our family, extended family, suffering, and we just turn a blind eye, we might be guilty of not helping them. And then when we pray to Allah later on, if it becomes too much, then we might pray to Allah and Allah may not answer our prayers, my dear brothers. So please remember, when you see your extended family members being hurt by other extended family members, then in a nice way, try to help everybody. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluma. He said, help your brother, be he, an be he an oppressor or the one oppressed. So the Sahaba asked the Prophet ﷺ, that they understand how to help the one who is being oppressed. But how do they help the one who is the oppressor? So the Prophet says, The Prophet said, Prevent him or stop him. Meaning, stop the ways to him doing zulm towards the other. Or stop him altogether from that. This is your way of helping the oppressor. Meaning, Help the oppressor to stop doing the oppression. And then Allah said in the Quran that sometimes, as when I spoke to the brother, as when I spoke to the brother, he realized that some of the people he needed to stop from doing oppression, like those sister-in-laws and so on, they were elders. They were a bit older. So he thought, how can I how can I speak to them when they are older? I mentioned to him to help the to stop, you know, to help the husband to stop his sisters from doing the oppression to the sister-in-law. He said the husband is young and the sisters-in-law are older. So the husband feels that, you know, all the time he was a little kid and the sisters-in-law were like the eldest, much older than him. So he feels he can't talk to them because they are so much older than him. 
<coughs> and because they are his elders and his sisters and so on. But listen to the verse Allah says, when some of our close relatives may be the one doing wrong, my dear brothers, what we owe to them. Allah, say, Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, kunu qawwamina, lil, qawwa, qawwamina bil qisti shuhada'a lillah. Allah says, O you who believe, be the upholders of justice, be the upholders of justice as witnesses to Allah. Walaw ala anfusikum. Even if it is against yourself, even if it means establishing the justice might be against yourself if you happen to do something wrong, awil walidaini wal or your two parents or your relatives, your near relatives. So, my dear brothers, Allah is saying that even if our parents did something of oppression or wrong, or our close relatives, then help them to stop them from doing the oppression that they are doing. If you find that your parents are doing something where they're hurting other people, we should respect our parents. Not the way kids behave on TV these days, my dear brothers. That is not Islam. Our parents looked after us when we were vulnerable and we desperately needed them <coughs> after our need to Allah. So we need to look after our parents and respect them. To the extent some people out of their immense love and respect for the parents, they feel they cannot even look at the parents in their eyes because of how much they look up to them. And that is not bad. That is, we should have the love and respect to our parents. But if our parents are one of those who are hurting our other members of our family and extended family, then our love for the parents should drive us to stop them from the punishment in hellfire for the hurt that they are doing to the others. As this verse says in the Quran, وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ Even if it is against yourself or your two parents or your near relatives. My dear brothers, a khutbah like this, we don't have much time. So I can't talk much about this verse. But you can see this verse, it's like one of the most important verses in the Quran, my dear brothers. And quite often, we may see our parents, maybe they might be saying, divorce so-and-so. Parents may say to their daughter, divorce your son-in-law. Or the parents may say to the son-in-law, divorce your wife, etc. Now this is a complicated matter. I can't claim to speak about this matter in the khutbah. But all I would say is, speak to the learned people and speak to your parents to do justice with kindness love and respect that we owe to the parents and when your uncles may be hurting someone your brothers may be hurting someone your sisters may be hurting someone it is our duty we can't just turn a blind eye to go and try to help them to stop them from what they're doing as i finish i want to just mention a couple of hadith to finish this talk my dear brothers and because we are short of time i want to mention these hadith somewhat quicker I want to mention a hadith that the first time I read it, it really scared me, my dear brothers. It really scared me. And we all need to know this hadith because it really can be concerning any one of us. In this hadith, the Prophet mm. ﷺ, he asks the Sahaba, Manil Muflis, who is the bankrupt person? The Sahaba say to the Prophet ﷺ in reply, because they say, Al Mufli Sufina, man la dirham lahu wa la mata'. They say that a bankrupt person amongst us is the one who neither has any dirham, meaning money, nor mata, meaning assets. He has no money, liquid, liquid, he has no money, liquid assets, nor does he have other assets either. So the Prophet ﷺ says to the Sahaba, Al Muflisu min ummati, the bankrupt person from my ummah, man yatiya yom al qiyamah, the one who comes on the day of judge, day of resurrection. The one who comes on the day of judgment with prayer, fasting, and zakah. Subhanallah. He did a lot of prayers. He did a lot of fasting. He did a lot of zakah. But the Prophet is calling this type of person, not everyone who prays fast does is like that, but some amongst them can be. And the Prophet is calling them bankrupt. Why? He says, وَقَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا and he abused a person. هَذَا And slandered another person. وَأَكَلَ مَالَ هَذَا And misappropriated the wealth of another person and ate it. هَذَا 
He shed the blood of another person. And he beat up another person without right. So the Prophet says about this person, and notice my dear brothers, the Prophet is saying, even he just verbally abused another person. So sometimes we might verbally say to someone something that hurts them and oppresses them. We might think we are getting away in this life, but I'll mention a hadith about it later on. But listen to what's happening on the day of resurrection. The Prophet says about this person, فَيُعْطَى مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ هذا فيعطى من حسناته هذا ومن حسناته هذا the process says on the day of judgment the oppressor his good deeds of the prayer fasting and that his good deeds will be taken and given away to this person and taken and given away to the other person everyone that he oppressed in this life even verbally his good the oppressor's good deeds will be taken and given away to the other person on the day of judgment and then the process says فَإِنْ فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ if his good deeds ran out before he settled his account on the day of resurrection, The Prophet says, the other people that he oppressed, their sins will be taken and given to the oppressor, and the oppressor will then be thrown into the hellfire. So remember this, my dear brothers, just because we pray and fast and do zakah, don't think we can get away by verbally abusing or doing other abuse to other people. We need to be just. And in another hadith, as the Prophet said, he said, The Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sometimes lets, he sometimes gives time, gives time, gives time to an oppressor. And so when he seizes him with the punishment, he will not let him go. He will not let him off. So remember, if you get away from the punishment of Allah for zulm for some time, don't think you will get away forever. And I want to finish with a very important hadith. I spoke about all the negativity until now, about the consequences of oppression. But remember a last hadith that if you did justice, look at the reward on the day of judgment. If you did justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us that Allah says in a hadith, that those who do justice, just be 30 seconds inshallah, the Prophet says that in al muqsitina عند الله, those who do justice with Allah on the day of resurrection, ala manabira min nurin, ala yamini rahman. Those who do justice in this life, they will be on pulpits of light, my dear brothers, to the right of the most merciful. Who are these justice people? We sometimes think that they are big khalifas and rulers. The Prophet says, Those who do justice in their rule, with their families, and whatever they undertake. My dear brothers, doing justice to our mother, our father, our brother, our sister, our in-laws, our children, doing justice to them, we could be on the pulpits of light on the day of judgment. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all amongst the just people and to prevent us and forgive us for the wrong that we do. Ameen.